ABC. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. The country got a double dose of bad economic news today. The unemployment rate is up because thousands of people have been laid off. And the leading economic indicators, which are supposed to be a guide to what the economy will be like in six months, was down in September one-tenth of one percent. It's not a big number, but it is important politically as well as economically. And so was the unemployment rate which is a sign of how the economy was performing in October. It went up one-tenth of one percent to 6.8 percent. Our economics editor, Stephen Ogg, reports tonight on what the numbers mean. There were big job losses last month in construction, manufacturing down the second month in a row, and retailing, where they're not hiring as many as they usually do for the Christmas season. There was significant growth in non-manufacturing jobs. The number of jobs and services grew by 100,000. This industry has shown marked growth over the last six months. But many who lose their jobs and find new ones are often forced to take pay cuts. Nancy Furman of New York lost her job as a financial project manager last July. She just got another job as a consultant. I've lowered my pay scale because I couldn't find a job in my pay scale at my level. I've also been looking at jobs on a lower level in hopes to get into a company so I could move up again. And Mark Cyphers, who has a wife and three children, was a pilot for Eastern Airlines making $700 a week flying 20 to 25 hours. Now he makes up to $600 a week driving a truck, but he has to work 60 hours to do it. The biggest change is we don't, well, you know, we really don't save anything because we had adjusted our living to what I was making. The experiences of these two people are being repeated across the country as a result of massive job cuts by many of the nation's biggest companies such as AT&T, IBM, Westinghouse, Allied Signal. For most workers, all this translates into lower incomes. I think that's why the consumer is on his back. It's not that uh, there's a lack of confidence. It's not that uh, they're saving for a future rainy day. It's that they just don't have very much income. So many consumers simply don't have the money to buy a home or a new car. That slows sales, keeps production down, and prevents the economy from growing. Stephen Ogg, ABC News, Washington. Economists and politicians pay more attention than most to the numbers. The politicians count votes, which is surely why the Democrats are in full cry on the subject of the economy today and why the Republicans are worried. Here's ABC's Jim Wooten. On the road again, in this country this time, the president was making the best of the latest bundle of economic statistics. Things really are looking up, he said. These things need to be in perspective. It doesn't help to tell someone that's out of work. Unemployment is 6.8 percent, and that's far lower than at, in recession times when I was vice president back in the 81-82 days. But these days, in addition to the cold economy, Mr. Bush is facing lukewarm polls and Democrats in Congress heatedly blaming him and his cabinet for what's gone wrong in America. This is their government. They are in charge. This is George Bush's recession plain and simple. I mean, these people are living in some kind of dream world, the Secretary of Labor and the Director of, of the Budget and the President himself when they can make these kinds of statements. Well, the Senator Democrats Sarbanes, Sasser, and Regal held forth on the Senate floor today, most of the afternoon, with charts and graphs, but not a kind word for the President's policies or his two vetoes of bills providing money for the jobless whose benefits have expired. An identical bill has snagged for the moment on how to pay for it, but the president may soon see it on his desk again, and there's some suggestion that he may sign it this time. Today, though, he was focusing on how good things look to him. I got to be careful I don't over cheerlead on this economy, but I don't want to talk uh, people into a, into a further lack of confidence, because it's a good time to buy a house, frankly. And a good time to buy a car, too, he said. Fact is, though, most Americans are buying neither houses nor cars. They're saving their money to help get them through this recession that won't go away. Jim Wooten, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Still on the subject, the House and the Senate have finished work on a $291 billion defense spending bill. It has no new money for the B-2 stealth bomber. It allows women to fly in combat. And in a most unusual addition to a defense bill, it provides $1 billion in humanitarian aid for the Soviet Union. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrials lost about 13 points to close at 30.55. The trading was heavy. Still, for the week, stocks gained more than 50 points. 
We'll come back to the economy at the end of the broadcast when we pay a return visit to some of the children of poverty we met in Ohio last June. Also in the broadcast, San Francisco tries to save a neighborhood institution. And when we come back, the Madrid Peace Conference.